In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the age of all ages, Amen. Today is the sixth Sunday of the Holy 50 Days, the Sunday, the only Sunday after the Ascension Feast and before the Pentecost Feast, the descendant of the Holy Spirit. And today the church arranged to read a passage from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16. And if we know, John 16 is one of the chapters of the Paraclete. It's the chapter the Lord Jesus Christ was talking to his disciple in his farewell discourse just before he will go to be crucified on Holy Thursday, the Covenant Thursday. Before he was arrested, he was talking to them about this. And someone may ask, so why we read this chapter today after the ascension, if it was before the cross, before the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, or during the day uh, he was at the last, after the Last Supper? So why we read it today? If we notice the readings of the Holy 50 days, the Gospel, the Gospels were arranged to reveal things about the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we take it from the first week until today, you will see something was revealed about the Lord Jesus Christ, which match with how the Lord Jesus Christ was to reveal himself to his disciples in the holy 50 days after he resurrected, he appeared to them in many ways. In the first week of the Holy 50 Days, when we read the Gospel, when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples in the upper room, and how we see him, the resurrected Christ, how the disciples saw him, they were glad when they saw the Lord. And this is the first thing about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source of gladness and joy. No other things will give us true joy in our life unless we have the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second Sunday of the Holy 50 day, another thing is revealed about him. We read the gospel of the bread of life. He's saying, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And that's another thing. He is the bread of life. On the third Sunday, we read about the Samaritan woman, and the Samaritan woman gospel, something also revealed about Christ. He is the living water. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. And on the fourth Sunday, Christ, he is the light of the world. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And on the fifth Sunday, last Sunday, we read about the Lord Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And today, we see the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John 16, another way how he reveals himself. He is the source of victory over the world. The source of victory over the world. He said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. He is the source of victory. He is the source of victory. He is the one who overcome the world. But the world came in the Bible with four different meanings. The word came in the Bible, the word means the earth. He came to the earth. 
He came as a light into the world, like to this earth, as human. He was incarnate and he became a man like every one of us on earth. The word also came with another meaning in the Bible. When we say, do not love the world or the things in the world, what does it mean, the world here? It's all the worldly affairs, all the lust, the riches, the pleasures of this life. And also the word came in another meaning when, when we read, God so loved the world. Here the word is not, doesn't mean the worldly desires or the sin. God did not love the sin. But it means, the world means people of the world, the people themselves. And also the world came with the meaning of the universe, the planets and stars and the adornment. And from this world, the world cosmetic came because this word means cosmos in Greek and cosmetic came and cosmetic means any adoration, any uh, things that we decorate things with. So when the Lord says in the world you will have tribulation, I have overcome the world. The first word means the earth. In the world you will have tribulation as long as you are on the earth. As long as you take this flesh and live on earth, you will have tribulation. I have overcome the world means I have overcome the sin, the worldly and earthly affairs, affairs and all the pleasure and riches in this world. In the world you will have tribulation, I have overcome the world. And those two things will give us the, the Christ, the victorious Christ, the conqueror of the world. And we see him in this passage. Tribulation, what's a tribulation means? Any pressure or suffering, whether this tribulation to test our faith or this tribulation from outside by the devil or by evil people who, uh, who cause tribulation to us. Whether this or this. In any tribulation, I still have a choice. And the outcome will be based on that, will be based on that decision that I will take. So if you see this equation, the tribulation plus decision equal to the outcome. Any outcome will not be based on the tribulation itself, but it will be based on my decision, on my choice of this tribulation. How did I handle it? And how can I handle it to have a good outcome? So in the world you will have a tribulation. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the source of victory. So if I don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, and if I don't have that trust in him, I will not be able to overcome the world. And here, many youth will come and will say, the world has a lot of sins, a lot of evil things that's happening. And Abuna, you don't live in this world. You don't know what's happening. You don't go to the media, and you don't face what's, what we face. And you don't go to school or university, and you don't face what we are facing from challenging. It's beyond our ability. It's beyond us. But here is the key word. I have overcome the world. You can overcome the world if you have Christ with you. You can do it by yourself. If you have Christ with you, you can overcome the world. Challenge is there, tribulation is there, but if I decide not to take Christ with me, I will fail. If I decide to overcome with Christ, the outcome will be the good outcome. I will have the victory. And with that victory, with that facing the tribulation, I will have also peace. And that peace the source of that peace is the Lord himself. 
He is the source of this peace. He said, in the world you will, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. If we trust him, and if we take the Lord, and if we face any tribulation in Christ himself, we will overcome. And to have peace that's in him, and to have joy that's to be of good cheer. And that's in another way, like to take courage, because if I stay behind in fear, and I can't make it, and I feel down, I will not be able to have that victory. But I have that trust, and I have that peace, and I have that courage to overcome the world. And Christ lived as a man of affliction. Throughout his life, he faced tribulations. And he said, he is giving us this promise, you can overcome the world because I did. And if he overcame the world in him, we too can overcome the world and become victorious. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.